see. Jason is working through some technical difficulties and he will join momentarily. Okay. Perfect. Well, good enough. Um, thank you all for joining today. It's uh, April 26th, Tuesday, and I um, welcome to our April um, KMAC or Kensington Municipal Advisory Council meeting. Um, I hopefully everybody can see the screen right now. And if not, uh, um, I can make it a little bit bigger, but definitely this is our this is our agenda for tonight that's on here. And then um, what we'll do is I'll take a roll call, I'll call for citizens comments. And those are comments that are gonna be uh, from citizens of Kensington and beyond um, in regards to items that are not part of this meeting tonight. We'll talk about, um, we'll have a, the approval of our meeting notes that we had at our last meeting, which was January 25th. And then we'll talk about the two projects that we'll see um, here about is uh, 23 Kerr and 189 Purdue, and uh, and then we'll adjourn. Um, and then during that before um, we talk about the uh, uh, the projects, I will kind of go through the procedure in terms of how we're going to structure the process of, of that part of the. Meeting. Um, but that said, it's 7.02, and, um, and I am Patrick Tahar. I'm the chair of KMAC. I see that uh, Chris Bryden, vice chair, is on, uh, Lloyd Cowell, uh, council member, and Larry Nucci is on. And so we have a quorum. We have four of our uh, uh, KMAC members, uh, um, we need three as a quorum. So actually any, any review or discussion that we have and any sort of recommendations that we have um, can be then sent to, um, to the planning department zoning administrator uh, for our recommendations. So at this time, I'm gonna call for any citizens comments that maybe not in particular of any items that are part of this um, meeting tonight. So if I have anybody that- Patrick, are you the host? Or who is, uh, you know who the host is? I think, um, I think Robert is- Robert, if you are, could you mute 408-839-6052? I think it's a mobile, but it's given feedback. Yes, happy to, thank you. What? All right. I'm sorry. Super. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Good enough. Thank you, uh, Chris. Uh, so, if there's any uh, citizens' comments, um, okay. I, I I have a question. Actually, maybe if hopefully Robert might be able to ask. It's a question um, with regards to um, we're having this meeting as a Zoom meeting, but in the in the beginning of the year, they were trying to do a hybrid approach. And I don't know when that is supposed to actually possibly happen. Is that gonna start in May or is it going to be later? Or do you know? Uh, no one knows for certain yet, but I think May is a strong possibility. Okay, great, good enough. Thank you. Um, all right, um, if there's no citizens comments, it was, I, I do have a comment about, uh, about okay. uh, JJ's application. I don't know if that's, if this is the right time for that. About, excuse me? This is for items that are not on the agenda. So oh, okay. if there are items on the agenda, you'll speak during that period, during the open period. Got it. Super. All right, thank you. Uh, if there's no other comments, I'm gonna go to the approval of the meeting notes of January 25th. I believe the council members have, received those notes and uh, hopefully have reviewed them. And so I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from January 5th, 2022. Uh, January 25th, I'll second that. Sorry, did I read that wrong? Yep. <laughs> oh, you said fifth. So okay. <laughs> okay, so I hear a, 
a motion from Chris Bryden to uh, approve the meeting notes of January 5th, uh, 25th, and um, a second by uh, Lloyd. Um, do I hear any, do I have any discussion or questions or comments regarding the meeting notes? If not, I'm going to ask for vote. Um, so all those in favor of the, of, of the approval of the meeting notes, um, raise your hand and say aye. 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 OK. Aye. So I have, uh, I believe I have uh, Chris, Lloyd, uh, Larry, and myself, Patrick, have, uh, have approval uh, for the meeting of January 25th. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, great. So here we are um, at uh, the first um, part of the meeting that we will discuss, which is um, the, the projects. I'm going to put up sort of the process of this part, and then I'm going to read two things that are in regards to the first project because it's a variance. So um, let's do so. These these this meeting process was actually made before we are in a Zoom uh, kind of discussion, but um, with that, it follows pretty closely of how we're going to um, conduct the meeting. So first we'll have the applicant present the project and then we will have um, uh, KMAC ask some brief questions to the applicant if there's any comments uh, with regards to the application itself. And then what I'll do is open the meeting to the public. Um, that's uh, anyone who wants to speak at, 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 um, at this point in time. Uh, regarding the project, I will have the speakers identify themselves and if they could also either um, raise your hand, if you can see on your Zoom screen, to raise your hand, as well as um, if, 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 if it is possible to use the chat in terms of just providing an address of, your, of, um, of where you, where you um, live. And then um, I will ask uh, the speakers uh, can make some questions and some comments. I'm gonna, there's quite a few people. Um, so I think I'm gonna limit it to three minutes a speaker. Um, and, um, and then after all the speakers have has, uh, discussed or had questions, I will ask um, the applicant can then respond to all the comments and questions that come up during the during the public uh, uh, forum, and then after that, I will close the close the meeting um, to the public, and we'll discuss it amongst ourselves, the KMAC members amongst ourselves. And then the last thing is that KMAC will hopefully make a recommendation at that point. And I, I, and I mean a recommendation, we do not approve or deny projects. We only make a recommendation of our, uh, our recommendations of the project and our recommendations go to um, the Department of Community Development and the Zoning Administrator uh, for their review and approval or denial of the project. So the second thing I'm going to bring up is, as I mentioned, there are two things that are part of, uh, there, uh, there's, we follow um, the general plan policies of the Kensington area. And I'm gonna just read those for right now. So both of these projects need to um, show to us uh, sort of what, what we're making our uh, recommendations on. So the first one is to allow for the review of the new residential development that provides reasonable protection for the existing residents in the Kensington community with regards to views, design compatibility, including building bulk size and height, adequate parking, privacy and access to sunlight, the second is the preservation of views of the scenic natural 
features, for example, the bay and mountains and the developed environment, such as bridges and the city skyline, should be incorporated into our review. The third is the review of the pro proposed development uh, for its design compatibility with nearby developments regarding building height, mass, mechanical activities, and provisions for adequate parking. The fourth is the new residential development will be reviewed against realistic impacts of privacy and sunlight on the surrounding neighbors. And the fifth, if, this, if there were non-residential developments in the Kensington community, we would also look at these four items that are above uh, as, as our guidelines in terms of our recommendations. So that's for both of the projects. And I believe the first project at 23 Kerr has one other, uh, it's a variance, it's asking for a variance. And these are the three variance findings that we must, we must find in terms of, um, and they, we need to be consistent and agree that all three of these uh, findings are, are met. So I'll read those. Uh, the first one is that any variance authorized shall not constitute a grant of special privilege inconsistent with the limitations on other properties in the vicinity and the respected land use district in which the subject property is located. The second is that because of the special circumstances applicable to the subject property because of its size, shape, topography, location, or surroundings, the strict application of respective zoning reg regulations is found to deprive the subject property of rights enjoyed by other properties in the vicinity and within the identical land use district. And the third is that any variance authorized shall substantially meet the intent and purpose of the respected land use district in which the subject property is located. So those are the three variance findings that I believe that the first application 23 curve must, must meet. So with that, I will go back to the meeting agenda <laughs> and we will listen, uh, we will uh, discuss the first project which is 23 curve. VR 2101015. It's a request approval of variance and the Kensington design review application to allow three stories where two and a half stories is maximum for a 700 square foot upper level addition and to convert the attached garage to conditioned space. The gross floor area will be a total of 2,666 square feet where 2,700 square feet is the threshold. So at this point in time, um, maybe it's Jason that would want to uh, provide um, to discuss the, the, the project. I can stop sharing and I'll let you um, present. Thank you, Patrick. Um, hey. My name is Jason Caldas. I'm the architect for the partial upper story addition and remodel for Ayal and Ellie Slore at 23 Kerr Avenue. Ayal and Ellie asked me to help design additional space for their growing family. Um, the existing three bedroom, two bath home houses their family of five, soon to be six. The addition proposes adding 730 square feet that includes two bedrooms and one bath, a stair, a projecting bay in the stair hall, to the northern half of the upper floor where it has the least impact on all adjacent neighbors, seemingly omnidirectional views across the property. The addition is scaled and situated uphill over the existing footprint where the existing structure is closest to grade to minimize building height, mass and impact on long range and scenic views. The footprint of the existing house twists southwesterly in relation to Kerr Avenue and the rectangular shape of the lot. This twist in orientation reaches back to the home's 1958 origins to accommodate a garage on the lowest level and a small split level understory that yields a bat bedroom, bathroom, hall, laundry, and understair closet. These are collectively bunkered into the hillside by means of retaining walls and characterized by slab on grade floors that are well below the surrounding exterior grade. The entirety of the primary living space is kitchen, small dining, small living room, and two bedrooms, one hall bath, and small closets round out the main floor living space, which due to the topographic conditions qualifies as a second story, even though at the rear, 
It is only four risers to grade, 28 inches to grade. Because of the steep uphill nature of the site, the driveway was originally positioned at the lowest part of the site. And even, even having done that, the driveway slope varies from 13.8% to 20%. The approach to the garage requires a left turn up a 17% approach that is a car length long. For this reason, adding laterally to the home on either level is impractical as it would either remove at grade parking or make the development of a new garage impractical due to shortening the driveway length or making it yet steeper. The area that could be developed if parking were not a consideration is only 480, 480 square feet and would not result in providing Ayala and Ellie with additional bedrooms, bath and work from space home for their family needs. The twist of the house in relation to the lot further removes opportunities to add laterally to the front, to the back, to the side. It should be noted at this because of the setbacks. It should be noted at this time by preserving the existing footprint and not ending outside it, the application meets all of the development standards with room to spare, including, but not limited to, all setbacks, height, lot coverage, gross, gross floor area, and parking. The proposed upper story addition situates the stair logically in relation to the existing stair and borrows closet space from the Western main floor bedroom. The design of the addition hues closely to the original house's exterior and interior architectural expression and structural rhythm of exposed Douglas fir posts and beams that are set at four feet on center laterally with an exposed tongue and groove wood ceiling that is set at just under eight feet with the bottoms of the beams set at just under seven feet, two and a half. The new upper floor and deck assembly is two by eight with new roof insulation layer above the addition that fits in a two by six flat rafter. What this means is that the building only grows in overall height by nine feet, one and five eighths inches, and the average height of the four primary corners of the building average the, of, the, of the addition averaged to less than 24 feet above adjacent grade or fully 11 feet below the 35 foot height limit for the R6 district. This is possible because the floor that is counted as a first story is four to six feet below grade along the north face of the home. The request for the variance to exceed two and a half stories is not an unusual or unprecedented one in this hillside community. This particular neighborhood counts numerous upslope properties along the east sides of Arlington Avenue, Rincon Road and Kerr Avenue, and also at Highland Boulevard and Cooper Avenue, and numerous downslope properties on the western side of Arlington Avenue, Lamb Court and Kerr Avenue that enjoy more than two and a half stories and yet greater height than is proposed by this application. Such properties have similar limited impacts to neighbors short range views, especially when the views are not perpendicular over, but diagonal, diagonally over neighboring properties and little if no significant impacts on long range, long distance scenic vistas than this application proposes. Regarding views from 22 Arlington, this is the property upslope and east, the limited impacts to 22 Arlington are to short range and not downhill views that are largely due west over the existing roof and from the more northern vantage points, such as the sitting room adjacent to a kitchen, which is at the closest point, separated by 30 feet of open space between the two homes. This uphill home, which added substantially and a distinctive addition in 1998 that resulted in a minimum setback at the rear property line, has 12 windows, all nominally four feet wide and eight feet high, one eight foot wide sliding door, and one narrow style one light swinging door that faces with, with all of these windows and doors facing at least three directions. The interior furnishings of the living room at this home and the dining room at this home, and the location of the deck off the dining room and living room where a barbecue is situated, all orient to and point to the south and southwesterly views that are scenic and panoramic in nature and completely unaffected by the proposed addition. These are views because of the orientation of the topography and the subdivision of the land south and southwest of their property that will persist in perpetuity, notwithstanding the growth of trees. Views of Oakland City Center, the Port of Oakland, the South Bay, a glimpse of the east span of the Bay Bridge, and a glimpse of Emeryville's tower can be seen where the western stand of trees that surrounds the Carmelite Monastery extends as far south as Arlington Court. It should be noted that when this distinctive glassy addition was built closer to the downhill home at 23 Kerr, the uphill views from 23 Kerr were impacted in that the glass walls moved closer and at a height one story above the main floor of Kerr and only 30 feet apart. Regarding views from 20 Arlington, there are no impacts to any long range, distant or scenic views from the upper floor living space of 20 Arlington Avenue. That home also has many windows that face south, southwest, west, and even north. This home is fully uh, one and two stories higher in elevation than, uh, than, than the applicant. 
There are both short range views of thick, tall evergreen trees at the Carmelite Monastery, as well as views north of that towards where Kerr winds down to meet Edwin and sweeping all the way to the south um, to, the, to, you know, to Oakland city views. Some of their downslope views are impacted by their own trees and a star jasmine draped fences that surround their pool patio. These views from the upper floor include some downslope views across the roofs of 22 Arlington and 23 Kerr, but none of the views are long range views and are instead simply views of the roofs of other houses and the trees that separate properties from one another and the houses downhill on the west side of Kerr. None of these downhill or short range views are significant in the way that the tree obstructing views ordinance refers. From that ordinance, view means a range of sight, including pleasing vistas or prospects or scenes. Views include, but are not limited to, the sight of geologic features, bays, ocean, skylines, bridges, and distant cities. Um, none, none of those kinds of views are impacted at all by this addition to the house to the north and uphill. The applicant requests the board support of the application as presented. The neighbors have not made any suggestion to alter the design other than to consider not locating it where it is proposed. There is no other practical or logical place to locate such an addition. Other applicants have sought and received approvals for similar upper story requests where the height limit is not exceeded in similarly situated topographic circumstances. The project conforms to all of the development standards with room to spare. Variances to exceed two and a half stories have been granted not just throughout Kensington and for some time now, but also in this neighborhood within line of sight or a short walk. A neighbor's desire to have particular views in perpetuity while still enjoying nearly panoramic views from their property would have a chilling and unequal effect on all neighbors situated downhill, including my clients. For these reasons, we ask for your recommendation to the zoning officer to approve the variance. Um, and I'd like the opportunity to respond to neighbor comments and answer any questions and perhaps also work out the technological bug bugs that didn't allow us to present any images. So I apologize. So Jason, I, uh, thank you for your presentation. It, it was quite, um, there was a lot of information there. And I think you had asked, um, uh, I, I, I will probably need, uh, it seems like you had read something. So I'm gonna ask you if you can set, send that to, to me so I can distribute it within our, our group itself. But sure. we have also recorded as well. So sure. I just wanna make sure that we have all the information that you read, it's, it's quite a bit. I don't know, um, normally we have the applicant actually go over the plans um, as opposed to kind of discussion about what it is. So um, do you, can you not do that? I do have- I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna try, let me just see, let me just see if uh, we're just having a little, I'm, I apologize. I should Cause I do have the application itself. Um, no, 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 I, 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 we're, on, we're online, we're online through me. And what I don't understand is where the folder is. <sighs> Where's the folder? Where's the folder? If not, I can I can put it up, and and if we can 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 we switch over to could you um, could you mute me and could we switch over to Ayal because he's got it on his computer. I I apologize. I, um, I came with a okay. laptop and it's- um, Sure, I mean, I you can unmute yourself, I think, for, I don't- I can, I can mute myself. Can you mute yourself, I can, I can share it from this computer. Yeah, it seems like he's, yeah, is unmuted. Share is- Share screen. Talk and okay. the plans are showing. Okay, unfortunately, the images that show the longer range are not part of this, um, you know, the, the variance package. Um, but um, uh, north is to the right, east is down on the plan, uh, west is up, and uh, we have south to the left. Uh, the house is an upslope property in two directions. Kerr Avenue ascends northerly and Arlington is uphill, Arlington and Rincon are uphill from, from this property. Arlington, the properties of Arlington are uphill from this property. The properties uphill towards Arlington have broad, uh, uh, fairly shallow slopes until they get towards the rear of their property and then there are precipitous changes in topography. I imagine this has something to do with the way these lots were graded 
um, and, and developed when the roads were made. Um, and the consequence mm -hmm. is that there are, there are uh, uh, steep slopes between the Arlington properties and the Kerr properties, and there are steep slopes from, uh, on, on all of the Kerr properties uh, that, that are riding high on the hill uh, in relation to Kerr, there are steep upslopes uh, on the east side of the street and uh, gentle to steep downslopes on the west side of the street. And there are a few houses which don't have too much in the way of slope because they're in the hollow or the drainage swale of, of the street. Um, so uh, uh, that's sort of the general orientation. Uh, 22 is uh, uphill in, in our plan uh, uh, north uh, east. Uh, down on the plan, and 20 is uphill and to the right in the plan. Um, uh, this is the what I was referring to as the slight twist in the orientation of the house in relation to the platted property, and the location of the driveway uh, might appear to um, present an opportunity to develop space there, but in fact, uh, the topography is so steep that if one were to try to develop a, a garage at that elevation, you wouldn't make it. You simply couldn't, you couldn't arrive fast enough. Uh, uh, it would be, the driveway would be too steep. It needs all of the length that it has just to get to the parking spaces uh, that exist in front of the garage and um, to the, um, in, in, into the garage itself, which we are uh, going to develop into living space and park in the space that is at the top of the driveway. Um, uh, let's scroll here. Uh, I'm sorry, let's just get rid of this. Um, so the main floor of the house, uh, the, well, we'll start with the lowest floor. The lowest floor of the house has a, has a garage that's entered from the south. We're converting it to a family room. It's down at grade, bunkered into the hill. There's a half a level up to another bunkered into the hillside um, site. And, um, yeah. Uh, I have um, I have some sites. Let me, let's go to the exterior elevations. I think that's going to show the site topography. And I apologize. I'm, okay, so here's a, a proposed east elevation. This is what the neighbor at, at 22 would see. They would see the 22 foot nine inch wide by nine foot high uh, upper story. Um, it would have uh, two windows facing them. One is a bedroom window, um, and one is a bathroom window. Um, the uh, you can see that the building is, um, on average, the four corners. When you average out the four corners that are associated with the addition, you end up with a little bit less than 24 feet in building height. Um, that also, let's see if I can kind of scroll over here. I apologize. Um, uh, can you see the north elevation? You can see the proposed north elevation. Yeah, you can see the proposed north elevation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the proposed north elevation uh, would be uh, facing uphill north and would be facing uh, the property at 20. And there are only two very small windows, one from a bathroom, uh, sorry, three small windows, one from a bathroom and two from uh, a bedroom. Uh, the view from the view from Kerr uh, would look uh, like uh, west elevation. Um, the, uh, the existing house has a, a flat roof with insulation on top. And we would um, continue that uh, uh, style and pattern. Uh, this has the effect of keeping the addition very, very low uh, in, in comparison to the existing grade. And then the south view shows the, uh, a, a view that simply can't be had other than a CAD drawing, a uh, very flat view of the house. Uh, it shows where the garage doors are being altered to a pedestrian door and a window facing south. And the existing main floor is having one door expanded into a sliding door, a swinging door is being expanded into a sliding door. And then the upper floor uh, has a roof deck and um, uh, sliding door from a bedroom and a projecting bay that has a side door to access the deck. Um, this is the low slung nature of the house. And, in, and indeed, um, uh, you know, this, this, this uh, upper floor uh, qualifies as a second floor, uh, according to the, um, the definition. Uh, 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 there's a little bit of a conflict between the definition of a story, which appears in the R6 zoning, and the definition of a basement, which appears in the Kensington Overlay District. There, are, There is not the definition of a story in the Kensington Overlay District. 
and as a result because we have a basement and the basement has a floor level above it that is more than four feet above the grade that defines the basement as the first story and the main floor as the second floor um, and this is the circumstance that because of topography all of these other houses in this neighborhood uh, that are enjoying three three floors of living um, uh, have encountered and and as a result have either been granted variances or were built at such a time that no variance work was needed um, and let me see if I can let me see if I can access Jason I go ahead yeah, I, you know, I, I, I think we're long on time. We have, yeah, we're long on time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you have uh, it right there to show, but I think you've given us and given the, I'm going to say the audience, um, the public, um, enough information for us to discuss. Sure, thank um, you. So, yeah, so at this time, I'm going to just um, ask any Team Mac members if you have any brief questions or comments regarding the application or the, the application or the project itself. So maybe I'll just point to you first. So I'll go with Chris. Do you okay. have anything? I guess two questions. It sounds like you did talk to the neighbors, but you got no feedback. But my question would be is, have you put up story poles to give them an indication of what the space would actually look like? That's usually a, a very easy way to demonstrate the impact. Have you had an opportunity to do that or did you have that discussion with the neighbors? Yes, we did that last week and I apologize. This is where my technological snafu has, has occurred. We took a lot of pictures, a lot of pictures. Um, and we did discuss the uh, the impacts with each uh, of the- So those are virtual story polls, but you didn't put up actual story polls, I got you. Okay. Uh, we, uh, if you look closely at the picture, they are actual story polls. They are there, okay. Yep. Ayal, Ayal is holding up a nine foot, he's holding up a 10 foot pole Great and has pole. a cross yes. feet at nine feet, one and five eighths. And we walked him around eight, uh, the eight corners of the addition uh, live with um, uh, Paul Reef and Ellen Shibata at uh, 22 Arlington and uh, Vita uh, uh, at um, 20 uh, Arlington. Vita lives uphill and this is the view from her lovely um, artist's room where she has an easel set up and she looks out to the South Bay and the city of Oakland and all of the spaces that are between the properties uh, that front on Kerr and Arlington, which is a, a lovely circumstance because it means that pretty much no development can happen in that uh, 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 green bladed alley. And uh, you can see that our virtual story poles I've, I've thumbnailed in our very low slung flat roof um, uh, upper story addition. And um, you, you can see that uh, it does not even reach the horizon of a seating or standing view from her upper floor. And if you look down, you can see that um, at the lower level, they have a pool with a, pool, with a surround uh, and the surround is, um, I'll use the word fenced in uh, with um, uh, some lovely star jasmine and other uh, evergreen uh, growth, um, but that there is not any vista out from that level. Um, Vita did uh, show me downstairs and uh, told me about some plans that she's um, thinking about doing to the backyard that would involve the removal of that fence and would uh, potentially involve uh, thinning trees. And it was her prior hope to be able to look out over uh, 23 Kerr and that will still be uh, the case, uh, but not in the exact direction that the addition occurs, but in lots of other places. And um, as I said, uh, uh, both of these properties seem to enjoy nearly panoramic views and we're putting uh, a small uh, a footprint of addition into that view, but we are in no way blocking it or uh, you know, disallowing people to uh, take advantage of these very long scenic vistas um, uh, that are horizontal and, and you know out a, a good distance. Um, unfortunately, the, the trees at the Carmelite. I don't know if you can uh, if, you, if you have any pictures. So I'm gonna you know let me. Uh, it, that was just a, to be a brief question. So I guess the question is, you put up story poles, but they were somewhat virtual. 
temporary as opposed temporary to temporary and everybody took pictures and everybody looked at it. We were there for hours. Yeah. Yeah. Understand. I, that's all we wanted to hear. Okay. Good enough. <laughs> um, Chris, do you have any other questions? Not at this time. Okay. Um, Larry? We had asked what? for story polls, but it was rejected because um, I, please um, it's it's not time to talk. And then when I ask for the public to talk, I'll have you raise your hand and I'll call on you. Uh, but at this point in time, I will tell you all for right now, because I know that there's a lot of people that wants to talk. You want wants to talk about the project. You will have your opportunity to ask the questions to talk. Um, non-interrupted from either the applicant or others um, for the time being. But in order, I need your cooperation so we can continue on to the meeting so we can make a as expedient uh, part of this project uh, review as possible. So I'm gonna go to Larry. You have any questions? Um, the, the view that you just showed was from the upper level of the, the home the neighbor home, right? It's not from their lower le lower level, so we don't know what obstruction would occur um, by adding uh, this I, addition. I, am I am I correct? I, I it's just you know I mean it, it goes back to the earlier question about the story polls. You would not be able to see the story polls, Larry, from uh, the lower level because of the existing fence trees and lush landscape. In other words, I did take pictures from there, but you simply would not be able to see AL. It was not until we went upstairs that you could see the story poles at all and see the building form. It's that, uh, it's that thick. And I apologize, I, I'm just having a, a dickens of a technical problem here in accessing my photos on my flash drive. I apologize. It, it's the house to the Northeast though. It's 20 Arlington. So it's the one with the pool. So I think the one that's probably got the greater impact is 22. Which is directly behind it, looking forward. Okay. If you look at the juxtaposition of the lots. Yeah. So thank you. Because uh, yeah. that, because that, it's that looking was... sideways. It's looking at it from the side, looking towards yeah. Oakland. Yeah. So in other words, there is some, there are some implications for people's views. Um, am I, at least I, from what I've seen, that that yeah. would be the case. Correct. Um, the uh, the the implication um, the impact on uh, on uh, the views from uh, 22 Arlington are principally from the room that is the most north, which is a sitting room that is also part of a kitchen. The kitchen is uh, uphill and um, east of the sitting room. And if you're uh, cooking at the range top, you look across an island and between the a countertop and a range. And I apologize. And I think Paul Paul may have photos that he can present. I apologize. You know, I've taken hundreds of pictures on that day, and 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 I'm, I'm just not able to access them right now. I apologize. It's okay. That's fine. I just I just simply wanted to to just confirm that that there are places where apparently views are obstructed. That's all. All right. Um, I thought we had Lloyd Slade on. Hi, Patrick. Uh, I don't have there any questions are. about the applicant. Okay, you don't have any questions? Uh, no, not at this time, thanks. Not at this time. I, I do have just a clarification or just if, if, if um, I guess, Ayel or, or um, Jason wants to put up the one plan, or not the plan, but the elevation, the south and west elevation of of uh, the plans. Sure, let me bring up the plans again. My question is, and I'm just going to, and we'll also probably see it on the floor plan as well. I just want to be clear in terms of the third story that is under consideration, which is under the variance. And what I saw on the south and the west elevation, not so much the existing, but I'm sorry, the proposed. All right, 
There what, what's go. the question, uh, Patrick? I'm sorry. We have, we have uh, my question yes. is, I just want to clarify the, the third story of what the third story is. Um, I see it kind of, if I'm looking at the west and the south elevation, yep. I see that there seems to be a three-story element yes. right there along yes. both the south and the west. And I'm just trying correct. to make sure that's what it is. That is correct. Okay. In plan, can you just show that in terms of the sure. second and sure. uh, the first and the second floor in plan? There's the up, uh, keep going, one more. Keep going, there, keep going. There we go. There's the upper floor. And That's north right. is to the right, north is to the right. So this is the two bedroom, one bath, stair stacks, largely over stair, projecting bay to the south. And the existing okay. roof deck is used as a habitable deck. And can you show the floor below? Uh, proposed plan, and then the, the the bottom floor. There's the there's the Oops. existing existing main floor with a new stair tucked in to the right of the existing stair. Okay. okay. And then on the lower floor, there's the the garage is the largest rectangle right there that's to be converted mm -hmm. to the family room. It has a split level up. Um, it has a split level up to a, a crawl space on the crawl space on the north and east side. In the center of the call it basement uh, is a two lightless spaces, uh, a small bathroom, and a hall laundry, and then uh, a, a bedroom that faces the street, which you can see from the west elevation. And there are uh, retaining walls on the west and north side that allow this space to exist because it's below grade. It's, it's four to six feet below grade to the rear and uh, for the portion where the window is, it's, above, it, 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 it's, um, it's below grade. And then uh, there's a retaining wall uh, that springs out towards Kerr. There's a stone retaining wall that, uh, that allows the grade to you know, be held back so that the retaining wall doesn't have to keep going. Um, and that that part's as I understand it, that part's original to the house. So the house has been this way since 1958. Okay, that's all I had in terms of just making it clear in terms of what that third floor uh, and and the floors below it um, pertain. I could send you some of the photos that we took. That would be one way I could get past this this laptop problem. That's fine. I think for right now, I think um, we we'll have many people that will discuss. Um, I think they have, they may have pictures or photos as well that may be somewhat different than yours, but definitely um, we'll get a context of seeing those photos as well. So, um, so let me at this point in time, I don't have any other questions. So at this point in time, I'm going to open it up uh, to the public. So if you plan to speak, please raise your hand or get my attention. So <laughs> let's see. So I'm gonna make sure if you, if you wouldn't mind using the little, uh, there's supposed to be a little hand thing. So then I, if I can see, I can see Dorothy and Paul Reefs. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that, that group, <laughs> Dorothy. Is there anyone else? Ellen? Oh, Ash, Ash, Ash. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'll go with um, Paul and um, Rachel. You've also got Rachel as well. We can. We Rachel. Can, yeah. Okay. Can Good enough. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just call on you <laughs> and then um, hopefully uh, we'll get this. And Patrick, back. I'll start the timer. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Paul, why don't you go ahead? And, um, I'm going to have my wife Excuse speak me, first. This is Rachel. Could you sure. tell us how long we get to speak for? We don't know. It doesn't three say minutes. anywhere. Yes, three okay, minutes. Three minutes. minutes. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and if, if you can, if somebody's already said it, you don't have to say it again unless you really feel it's important. Yeah. Right. 
I'll have my wife Ellen speak first, and then I have photos okay. I can show you of the impact sure. of you. Sure. All right. I have all these documents. I'm going to be going yes. through the, the bullet summary of the seven page document, which is the longer document. So, okay. um, my name is Ellen Shibata. I um, am Paul Reeves' wife, and we live at 22 Arlington Avenue. And um, Paul purchased that home in 1978. And since then, we've made two major additions. The entire western face of this house has expansive views and abundant light, which have been provided by these large four by eight picture windows, um, which were in the original house and then reproduced when we added uh, a second edition. The 1998 second edition was designed to feature these views, solar access and light in, in the creation of a large professional grade kitchen, a large dining room and a great room. We assumed view from these primary areas would be protected by the ordinance. I'm a gourmet cook. I spend 75% of my time in these primary living areas of the kitchen, the dining room, and the great room, uh, in culinary activities, in hosting family and friends, and enjoy while enjoying the view. Uh, we also eat in these rooms. Um, Paul is a disabled senior and spends much of his time uh, in the living room where he enjoys the uplifting views, light, and solar access in a more sedentary manner. Both major additions were purposely built at grade level to preserve the views of our immediate neighbors. The 23 Kerr application variance interprets view in a much more narrow way. And it actually, if you read it, dismisses, devalues, and provides misinformation about the views from our kitchen, great room, dining room, and living room. Um, and Paul will show photos of that at the, after I'm done. The application for variance claims a special circumstance based on there being no other options to the third story addition. But our architect will show you after Paul presents another option. Further, a variance may not grant a special privilege and granting a variance for the third story Mr. Gurian uh, wishes to build is in fact giving a special, uh, uh, granting him a special privilege by essentially transferring our view and its attendant value to his property. The balance of interest compels a denial of this requested third story because the proposal does not meet variance requirements and it, it substantially rather than minimally impairs views, value and enjoyment of our property. In compliance with the ordinance, we built additions that were intentionally considerate of our neighbor's view, counted on the ordinance to protect our view and value. And we ask that the same respect be shown to us. Paul is now going to show you the photos of the view existing and what would happen to it with the third story addition. So Patrick, this since is, we, have, uh, we have two speakers, I'm gonna go ahead. That was perfect, by the way, you were three minutes on the dot, yeah. but we'll give you the additional time because there's two of you speaking. So I'll, I'll start over, but thank you. Uh, hopefully all you can see, this is the overview of the addition that was built in 1998. There is a, a common area that embraces the kitchen, our great room, family room, dining room, and living room. Most of the views are due to the are to the west, and I will uh, again. This these are the family room or great room, dining room. You can see these views are not unobstructed views to the south. These views are primarily to the west. So I took photographs using a standard 50 millimeter lens that would not alter the perspective. I took the photos from a camera that was perfectly level in two planes and I shot it these views at about six to eight inches below eye level rather than at sitting level, which would have been even more dramatic. This is a view from our kitchen through our family room and this red overlay, which I've introduced, is where the building would be. That's just from our kitchen view. The next view is from the family room itself. You can see Mr. Gurian up with the pole with the cross hatch at nine feet, uh, one inch. And again, adding in the building, you then lose this. If we then move over to our dining room, where, we, where I spend a great deal of time since I've become disabled, this would be the unobstructed or current view with the trees and the distance and the sky. And then with the building, you would have 
you would lose all of that. You would be staring at building. Uh, and finally, from the north end of our living room, you can see the double sliding door that goes out from our dining room to the deck. But looking through the window, through the deck, uh, if the building were there, you would have that. So in distinction to what Mr. Caldas has uh, intimated that we, our views are largely to the southwest, they are in fact primarily to the west. And when Jason was in the house, we had a very friendly conversation. And I asked him just in a matter of fact way, if you were the owner as, as an architect, how would you describe the impact of this proposed addition on the views? And he said, well, from the vantage point of your kitchen, your family room, and your dining room, quote, it would be a broadside, unquote. Those are his words. And finally, when the original plans were drawn up, his assumption was that the part of the house that is in opposition to the proposed development was in fact a bedroom, when in fact, as you can plainly see, this is our principal living area and this is where we spend all of our time. The bedrooms are far to the south and wouldn't be affected by the addition in any way. Thank you. All right. We, in thank answer you. to your question about the story post, I'm sorry I interrupted before. I, I, I didn't know the process exactly. I didn't mean to be rude. Um, the story post story you were asking about, what happened was we requested a standard story pole structure but um, it, it, it was kind of expensive. So we, even though we agreed to uh, share the price, they, they opted to instead have Mr. Gurion run around on his roof with a story pole instead. So that, that's why there was this other uh, option used. Understood, thank you. Right, um, let's see, who else? Um, I think- I know Rachel, yeah. was Rachel? And then we've got Dorothy, Ashton. Dorothy, Rich, uh, Dorothy. Ashton, and I'll go with Dorothy, and then I'll go with Ashton, and then Rachel. But that wouldn't wouldn't work. So, Dorothy, do you want to speak? Sure. I did send this letter to you, Mr. Jahara, and I live at 26 Arlington Avenue, which will be impacted by the addition of this third story on 23 Kerr. I'm a 54 year resident. I came in 1968 and I've looked at the plans that you've given to, to complete this third story. The structure will impede or block my view to the Northwest from my three West windows, even though there are trees behind. I look out at the, that house now and I'm seeing its roof. I look over at its roof and its deck and I'm a I'm appalled to see now what Paul Reef looks at. He just looks out at the roof. I see the house and the roof. So a third story will uh, close the openness that we're living above now and enjoy. It's not just about the views, but about the light and the beauty of our surrounding area. And I'm wondering if Kensington is moving towards a Blackhawk or massive homes like those built after the Oakland fire. I'm objecting to the variance to allow the building of this third floor for the reasons I have given above and for keeping Kensington within its ordinances. I am for keeping Kensington as it is a Kensington, that is its charm. And um, I did send you two photos of how I look at the house and the roof, which you may have seen. The other thing is, um, the last final thing I was gonna say was, I'm just really concerned about the three of us, especially Paul, that you would agree to put a third story there right in front of these houses above. And thank you very much. Thank you, Dorothy, for your comments. I'll go to Ashkin. Ashkan, is that correct? Uh, how you saw it? Yes, oh, it's Ashkan. Uh, good evening, Ashkan. everyone. I'm here to speak on behalf of uh, my parents at 20 Arlington Avenue. Excuse the sirens in the background. I'm actually in New York City uh, right now. Not as quiet as Kensington, unfortunately. Um, we really appreciate the effort that has gone into developing the, architect the architectural plan for 
um, the proposed development. And I'm sure there's a lot of architectural nuance and a lot of complexity that goes into drafting up such a plan. Unfortunately, um, our neighbor's architect, Jason, didn't address the key issues that kind of are at stake, the, the contentions that we have with the ordinances. Mr. Larry Nucci um, very keenly pointed out that out of the hundreds of images that were purportedly taken, only one was presented by our neighbor. And it was very strategically that one photo that um, represented the obstruction kind of to the least extent. There was no photo shown from the lower portion of our house, the downstairs area of our house, which is extremely, extremely dramatically affected uh, by the proposed development. I can share my screen very briefly to show a representative photo of what would happen uh, if the development was built. This is a photo from our downstairs view. Uh, Jason claimed that there were only three windows downstairs. There's actually five. Um, so it's a misrepresentation, mischaracterization of, of, the, of the kind of, of the number of windows that we have downstairs. My father spends probably 12 hours a day working. This is his office. It's his living area, basically. He lives, he lives down there. I can, I can say that for a fact that he lives in his office. Um, this, this, this would shaft his office, um, very clear from the photo. Um, and, and I'm sorry that this wasn't shown by Jason. Um, in addition, while the view, the, 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 the extent to which the, the development affects the view is much more dramatic for our neighbors. And it is appalling to look at the photos uh, that Paul showed because that, that, is, that is really, um, really dramatic. And what was also ignored when it comes to the effect that it has on 20 Arlington Avenue is the effect that it has on solar access. Um, so you can see very clearly that if, if this third story is built, it virtually blocks 50% of the light that comes through the main windows into the office. Um, this, 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 this downstairs kind of office area is already kind of um, almost like a basement in the way that it's built. It already has limited access to light. Um, if, this, if this development was successful in being built, uh, it would block a lot of the light that kind of makes that office area li livable. Uh, they believe this is the fourth criterion that you mentioned. And, and for this reason, we, we do wholeheartedly object to the variance. Um, I, I don't know if there's anything else that I think is salient uh, that, that I would like to add, but we also did draft up a letter that kind of goes into more details about the, the extent to which the development would affect our view and the enjoyability of our space. And if we haven't already sent that, I'd be happy to send that as well as other photos. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, before you um, uh, ask, and I, I don't think you've sent me anything. Um, so I'm no. wondering if you send me an email or put it in the chat because um, I, I, I know that you live in New York, um, <laughs> it sounds like, and your parents live on the Arlington, but um, one of the reasons why we ask for addresses or at least some way to get a hold of people is uh, if there need if there is follow up. So if you want to just put it in the chat and I can uh, have that your twenty Arlington. But how I would get a hold of you or your parents um, okay. somehow? So I, I included my email in the chat as well. Oh, okay, perfect. That's what I want. Yeah. Okay. And excuse me, I'm I'm also attending the meeting. Sorry, talking. Uh, this is Vida. Super. We, we're That's calling fine. on people. We're calling on people one by one. So we'll get to you. Yeah. Thing. If you yeah. want, we'll get to you, Vita, because I think yeah. Rachel next. Rachel's next. If if you want, everybody at the bottom of your Zoom create screen, there's a little smiley face with a plus on it. It's called reactions. If you click on that button, you'll see it says raise your hand, then you actually don't have to hold your physical hand up. And John, just like you, if you have your hand raised, we will get to you. So Vita, if you want, you could raise your hand virtually in the Zoom and we'll we'll get around to you. Right. So Rachel. Okay. okay, I'll start. I'm just going to read. I, I sent these comments to Patrick. I hope you got them. I didn't receive a reply, but I'm just assuming you got them, Patrick. Um, excuse me, Rachel. As an email. Rachel, Rachel, excuse me. Do you want me? I'm going to share my screen and put the picture on while you're talking. Oh, yes. Go yeah. ahead. So let me just do that. Um, I'm going to share because okay. we have a we have a picture as well. Um, 
so while you're talking, um, we'll take a look at this picture right here. Rachel, we, yeah, I, I don't remember where you live. Uh, I live in Lakeport, California. A 24 hour, 24 Arlington is, is right. she's the owner of 24, 24, Arlington. 24 Arlington. Okay. Yeah. No, I live in Lakeport, but 24 Arlington is the house that, yes. Correct. So, Correct. Patrick, I'm just going to read into the record the comments I sent you. Mm -hmm. My, my brother-in-law, David Guilford, who just presented the picture, he also, um, I believe, sent you comments. I don't know. David, maybe you can read your own or something. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I, did, I don't think it's necessary. I think your comment's great. I just want to show okay. the picture of our what we think it's okay. going to look like. So I'll Martin. read you my thoughts on the situation. Dear Mr. Tahara, along with my sister, I co-own 24 Arlington Avenue, which as with neighboring homes at 22 and 26 Arlington and perhaps others will be impacted by the addition of a third story to Kerr 23 Kerr Avenue. I completely agree with all the points made by our neighbors opposing the proposed third story addition. My parents, Mort and Thelma Elkins bought 24 Arlington in 1976 and the views and light coming into their home were major reasons for choosing to buy it. They immediately initiated a major remodeling project to accommodate their family of three teenage children and to modernize the 1957 built home. In doing so, they worked with, within local building code requirements, including building heights. At the time, they had an almost un completely unimpeded view of West San Francisco Bays and Skyline, Two Bridges, and the SF Bay. One of their main remodeling goals was to maximize their view shed and sunlight via adding and enlarging windows. Over time, the views from their home, as well as from their neighbors' homes, was gradually impeded by rapidly growing Monterey pine and other, e.g. eucalyptus tree species planted at UC Blake Gardens and the Carmelite Monastery directly below them. Despite months and even years of petitions, pleas, discussions, negotiations, in quotes, and other efforts, the trees remain and have continued to further impede views, even as many of them become more susceptible to drought and consequent beetle infestation and fire, by the way. Indeed, the situation with the trees created great emotional stress for my elderly mother, who watched her view deteriorate and was helpless to stop it. It also resulted in actual potential financial loss, as recent appraisals have reduced our home's potential value between $25,000 and $50,000, depending on appraisal, due to degraded view shed from full to partial. Now, 23 Kerr is proposing action that will surely further reduce our property value by adding a yet another obstacle to an already impeded view. Having to look from the north to a third story, deck furniture, activity, et cetera, will be the inescapable result if this project is approved. The above illustrates the short-term impact of the 23 Kerr proposal. The medium and long-term impact is perhaps even more important to the entire community. Approving this project will certainly signal to other current and prospective homeowners that Kensington is open for business when it comes to seeking height variances. Existing or prospective homeowners who wish to expand for additional residents, mitigate lost views, or seek to maximize resale value will plan to apply for a variance and will have this as president. I have been told that of the eight such approvals in the past, no views were impeded and there were no objections. While I don't know the specifics of these situations, that is certainly not the case in this situation and further ramifications must be considered carefully by KMAC. Kensington is a small unincorporated community. As a longtime homeowner and resident who values and respects neighbors' property rights and values, and who has directly observed the physical, emotional, and financial impacts of losing access to views and light, I strongly urge KMAC to withhold approval for this project and recommend denial by Contra Costa County. Thank you. Rachel Elkins, co-owner, 24 Arlington Avenue, Kensington, California. Thank you, Rachel. Rachel. Patrick, we've I'm got so John honored. and we've got Vita as well. She took her hand down, but I still think okay, she I think we had yeah, I think we had Vida, and then we'll go to John. So Vida, do you want to go? Uh, actually, I don't have anything to add to what Ashkan said. We just ask, uh, I try to say I'm here, and that's all. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Let's go to John. 
All right, uh, can you hear me? We can. Yes. Great. Um, so I, I live at 837 Coventry Road in Kensington, and I have a, the unique experience of actually having gotten the height variance uh, for a project across the street on Highland Avenue. Um, if you guys remember, it was maybe a year or two ago. The difference is striking though, in that we have one of those projects that it was just unique and that we weren't having like zero impact on anybody's views, zero impact on shadows. And we went through you know, great lengths to kind of de demonstrate that and we had no neighbor complaints. So between, so it felt like a compelling case in that case, you know, that, that it should have been approved and I'm happy it was. Um, so I got to know um, Ellen and Paul and I looked at the photographs and I was kind of shocked. I was initially thinking, oh, like, how bad can it be? And then I was kind of shocked when I saw how bad it can be. And um, so I think it's a, a different case for, you know, to, to propose something that just completely blocks somebody's view like that, um, you know, isn't right. You know, my next task was to look and say, okay, well, if I was in their shoes, what other options could I do? So I actually did a diagram. I, I know that Paul sent it to you. Do you have that diagram that shows the blue and the, that shows the blue? No, I haven't. Yeah. Uh, I, he, I he, think, I, 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 I'll just say that I sent many things and I probably have it and I probably saw it, but I don't have it readily available. It will take me some time to- Yeah, I'm on off. So if you have it, uh, that would be great. Um, let's see, I don't know. So I'm on my phone, so I- And, and sure. all this information also, if you did send things to me- We got it. I did pass them to all the KMAC members. Yeah, we, we, we received all the emails and, and okay. photos. John, what was your address? Um, so I'm at 837 Coventry Road. Thank you. Um, th there's a diagram that I created that just showed the, um, it was a color diagram. Let's see if that's it. Uh, no, that's, well, that's an old one. There should be a colored one, uh, a PDF. Let's see. Um, Yes, that's it. Yeah, so if you zoom in, you can see. So, so on Paul and Ellen's behalf, I actually just looked at it. And I, I'm not trying to redesign the project. And I, I felt a little bit conflicted, to be honest, just because I, I wouldn't want, you know, nobody wants their projects re, you know, assessed or whatever. Um, that being said, I was just saying, could they get the same square footage within the setbacks? That's the basic question. Yeah, that's what the guy uh -oh. So the the blue the blue shows that they could get the equivalent square footage if they built if they just went as a second story rather than a third story. All right. Um, and then la lastly, the one thing I, I just I was a little bit confused about the the, draw, the uh, some of the drawings and that they were focusing on the floor area ratio. And I, you know, when I've done projects in Kensington, I never focus on that as some kind of cutoff threshold. And I, you know, double checked with the planners and saying, you know. It, it, it's a guide, John. It's a guide. But, it's but, not it's, a limitation. It's just a guide that gives us an idea of how large the property is against the scale of other properties in Kensington. So it's right. not, it's not, not like a require, Right. The, the only thing that it triggers is an automatic hearing versus right. an additional hearing. Yep. And so Ellen and then Paul would, ask for a you know contra costa hearing if if this proceeds so it's that's kind of a non non-consequential thing i just wanted to point out anyways so that's all i had to say i'm happy to you know i can answer questions or happy to hear the conversation proceed all right thank you uh you can stop sharing your screen uh all right so is there anyone else that would like to speak in the public, if there isn't, I uh, I can have uh, Jason uh, respond to all the comments that we have, and once he responds, hopefully you can keep it somewhat brief. Um, 
and then I'll close the meeting and we'll talk amongst ourselves in terms of the KMAC members. So Jason, do you want to respond to any or all of any or all of the comments that were made? Uh, yeah. Um, Jason. Yeah, can, uh, can you have Ellie, can you uh, oh. have Ellie speak first? Oh, hi. okay. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Just wanted to say hi. I'm Ellie from 23 Kerr. I've been listening to all the neighbors. I understand, of course, no one wants any changes in their views. I also wanted to uh, raise the issue that other than views and the values of people's homes, there are also, you know, a life and uh, kids and families and needs um, of people of actually um, putting uh, kids in their in the space and uh, we realize that this will cause um, uh, this will cause uh, discomfort to our neighbors and we are sorry for that but uh, Jason here will explain why we had absolutely no other choice but the project that uh, we suggested and the plans that we suggested um, and he'll be happy to with you more. Yeah, and I would just add, just to echo those sentiments, we, we engaged Jason and we asked, our ask is, how can we add more space to our house with kind of minimal impact? Um, we're not obviously going to the full extent of what the ordinance is allowing us. We basically need additional space for a growing family and working from home setting uh, post-COVID. Uh, certainly appreciate that there's some impact on views. I don't think no one is saying that there's no zero impact of views. There is some, but I think we, I hope that the committee will take into consideration the broader perspectives and the broader needs of both um, ourselves and our family. And, and we've been living here a relatively short period of time. We don't know all these neighbors and we don't have relationships with many of them. Uh, we are really trying to, I mean, if I just crystallize it, generate some more space for our family in the optimal way uh, possible. This is not a luxury uh, project for us or a leisure project. This is really based on this house at this size does not serve our needs. And we love living here. We want to stay here. Um, but doing it in this existing house is going to be un <coughs> unsustainable for us. Um, with that, Jason, I can allow you to kind of respond to you. Jason, and I think in terms of just keeping the time limit, I'm gonna do, we'll have it five minutes because um, there was a lot of things to talk about. So, but I do want to just keep it at a certain amount of time. I, I, I'll keep it short. So. Um, unfortunately, I, uh, you know, I haven't, I don't, I can't access all of these hundreds of pictures I've had because I came with a laptop and just it's not we're not we're not able to get access to it and I apologize. Um, uh, each of the each of the neighbors um, has made a comment that does not strike me as particularly um, faithful to the way that they have been living in their homes and the um, their homes uh, tell a different story. Uh, for example. In the first photograph that Paul showed, he showed a photograph that had absolutely no impact. He labeled all of the rooms and he said, there's our view from our kitchen through our dining room, through our living room, out to the south and southwest. When I looked at the house from the outside and I looked at the view to the south and the southwest, that was the view that could be had. That was long distance range view. That was the scenic view. And I think Paul and his architect agreed with that assessment. And I think Paul and his architect agreed with it because they didn't just place the dining room table on an angle facing the Southwest. They also hung three pendant lights on an angle. It's not a temporary installation, it's permanent. Uh, when I was in the study with uh, Paul and Ellen, uh, I'm taller than Ellen. Ellen can look through the, um, the hood, but in one of Paul's photographs, you can see that standing behind the range and looking out the window, there are other things that obscure the view before the view is even encountered. There are things inside the house. 
I found that um, as I moved around in the space, uh, as I looked out the windows at uh, Eyal with the story poles, Paul had the camera normal to the window. So he was always looking with the camera uh, uh, facing normal to his house towards the west, towards the Carmelite monastery. Um, as I moved around in the space, I could see Vista beyond, uh, beyond uh, where Eyal had story poles and there was not an uh, obstructive wall. Um, when buildings are 30 feet apart, there is no effect on solar access, none at all, none at all, no effect on solar access. The sky canopy provides 2000 lumens, 10,000 lumens on super bright days. Indoor space provides 70 lumens. Buildings outside do not cloak the sun. They do not drape uh, barriers in front of uh, direct sun. When the sun sets west, the sun is setting behind the Carmelite monastery trees and there are no new shadows that are cast horizontally from this addition onto their property. I looked at the shadows yesterday and I saw that the shadow was hitting the ground at the end of the day at the property line. If I, if I extend that nine feet, it's gonna crawl up the landscape of uh, their backyard. It's not gonna strike their building. It's not gonna strike their windows. Um, there, there's a bunch of fear. And unfortunately these are complex issues and they are difficult even with fixed story poles and shadow studies to analyze. Um, all I can do is I can look around in the community and I can see uh, the entirety of Lamb Court is, exceeds two and a half stories. The entirety of every single one of those houses exceeds it. These are houses that are immediately behind 20 and 22, houses that they can see houses that perhaps have impact on 26 and 24 Arlington. There is a house south of 24 and 26 that is three stories tall at the intersection of Rincon and Arlington. It's, it's been there forever. It's a very tall house. The house that John Newton worked on at One Highland is, is three stories. And the neighbor that was immediately uphill and to the north complained that that new upper story is going to have some impact on their view across that property. This is true. However, what cannot be true, and it cannot be true, something that Ellen said, and these are really sweet people. Everybody's really sweet people. And, 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 I, and, I, and I deal with people all the time. I deal with neighbors all the time that say things that simply aren't true. Our views are being transferred to his property. How is it that these views become someone else's property? They are things we enjoy. They are things we have. And from Paul and Ellen's house, they still have a tremendous amount of panorama. And unfortunately, I have a diagram that I can't access from my laptop and my phone because we have incompatibility with these laptops and I can't get it on there. But I have a, I have a plan view that shows the cone of vision that is, that is available beyond the 22 feet, nine inch broadside that I mentioned to Paul and Ellen. Um, and it is a broadside, it's 30, 30 to 33 feet away, but it's also 30 to 33 feet away and not five or 10 feet away. It's not a side yard situation, it's a rear yard situation. And their home is a downslope lot where the house is developed all the way at the back of the lot, all the way to the minimum, the 15 foot minimum. When they built it, they expected the view in perpetuity, but they did not have a right to expect that in perpetuity. It was nothing about the ordinance that said that, they, that, that somebody wouldn't be able to build up in their view somewhere. And this is what we're getting from 24 and 26 now, which are lateral to us. We're not, they're not, we're not downhill from them. They're uphill from us. And we're, 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 we're south, okay. we're north of them, uphill. And there are other things north of us that obstruct views. Oh, Jason. So I, I just find this all very difficult to respond to. And unfortunately, I'm just, I'm, ha I'm, hamst I'm ham hamstrung myself technologically not to be able to share the hundreds of photos I took, you know, hours spent with these folks. Um, and Jason, time's yeah. up, but what, what I would say is we, Patrick and most of us have been doing this for 17, 18 years. We've seen a lot of pictures and, and we understand that, that pictures can be distorted. We understand that not everything is perfect. In, in short, to be honest with you, the most effective way for us to ever understand the impact on views is for you to put up story poles and for us to come and visit properties, which we're glad to do. And that's an option that you may have as we close. 
but the lack of pictures doesn't impact the, your, your, your presentation or our understanding of what's there and not there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'm going to close the public, public um, uh, part of the meeting and I'll have the KMAC members to discuss. And I'll just start with you, Chris, since you started the discussion regarding uh, the work, so the project. So give us your thoughts. So I say two things. One is, Patrick, without a site visit, we're never going to know the impacts of the view. So my, my one comment or recommendation would be is if, if we are to, we can always make a decision today on based on the information that's in front of us. And I would say is I, I think it, you know, Larry said it earlier, I think with what we're presented that it, it seems there are impacts and the neighbor's comments make me believe there are impacts. For us to view that, we would need to do a site visit and have story poll. So that would be my first concern or comment from a view perspective. I think the larger impact though um, is the, the, the variance. I do think it's difficult. Well, I understand there are properties in Kensington that have three stories. Most of those were built before KMAC and, and the input of all of the other ordinances and overlays that we've put in place. So it is not standard that a three-story house is, is granted. Um, as a matter of fact, over the years that I've been doing this, I, I, I don't think we, even though John commented, John's property at 837 Coventry was an existing condition. So where we have granted it, not as a special privilege, is when it's an existing condition, meaning he was making some modification to his house that was already a three-story house. However, it wasn't. So there was no change to the envelope. There's clearly a change to the envelope here. This is a true third story being put up above a garage. So there's no real way to get around that. It is no longer a basement when it's converted to a family room. It becomes a conditioned third story space. So while, while I understand it, it is what it is. And that is that that is not something that has been granted um, you know, over the years without little caution. Technically, when we've done it, we've typically asked the homeowner to dig to go down. So it doesn't create an upward an upward movement in the envelope, it creates a downward. So that's what, I, you know, my comments to third stories, how many there are, how many there aren't. Granted, most of them were done before we had the ordinance, before we had the overlay. Um, since then, it's been very limited. It's been in conditions where it is an existing condition that is just changed by the, by the moving of something internally or the changing of something that's already there and or the envelope has gone down. People have dug into the hill, not gone up on top. So those would be my comments, Patrick. Though. So my bigger issue isn't the view. Well, I'm glad to go out and take a look at it. My bigger issue is with the variance. I don't believe there's a legal finding. And I don't think there's an opportunity. I think there are other opportunities while inconvenient to change the design of the structure um, and still create parking. Right. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I'll go with um, Larry. I actually think Chris uh, summarized it quite well. Um, I, I don't see any way around this. Uh, this is going up, not down. Um, you know, and I and I think that that is different. Uh, and um, from what what we've been able to see, there will be uh, an impact on view, and that's another aspect of it. And I don't see how 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 following our own rules. How, how we can, um, I don't see how this works uh, as it's proposed. Right, and view, I think the other thing that wasn't brought up, but is clearly there is bulk. So it, from a scale perspective, it does put bulk into the view. While it doesn't, it, you can argue whether it impacts a significant view or not, it does put bulk into the view that doesn't exist today. Yeah, and then and the other thing is that you can't point to, to buildings that existed before these rules. Uh, my neighbors across the street from me have huge houses, uh, but those houses were built uh, before there was some attempt to try to rein that in. Um, and the point of these rules is to not have Kensington have uh, you know overly large houses on small lots. So that's where we are. Right, thank you, Larry Lloyd. Um, thanks, Patrick. I agree with Chris that it's questionable whether um, the requirements to grant a variance um, are going to ever be met based on the current plan. Um, I also am not very comfortable with making a decision on, on something this substantive uh, without seeing 
for um, ourselves uh, without, in, in a dispassionate manner, um, what the facts on the ground are. I think when we get into a situation like this where people don't really agree on the basic facts, it's not up to us to supply those facts in this context. So um, I would perf personally prefer uh, to spend um, some time in going to the to the scene and looking and, and basing our decision on the additional information that we get uh, from that experience. All right. Thank you, Lloyd. Um, so I had the last, I guess, I mean, the last comment. Um, I, uh, I totally agree with uh, council members regarding um, understanding views uh, understanding uh, how the views, how the bulk and size of the proposed project will impact the neighbors. As, as mentioned, there seems to be somewhat of a disagreement of what that is, but there is not a disagreement of that there's impacts. Anytime we have a proposed project, there it will be impacts. It's just a matter of what to extent of those impacts. However, I'm actually, that can and cannot be somewhat subjective in terms of discussion points, but what I'm most, um, I, I cannot support this project as it stands because of the variances, because of the fact that it's three stories, because of the fact that, is it, that it's, it's not in keeping with even the, the projects that have been proposed in the past and have passed. Um, there was a project, um, not only one Highland uh, that was an existing home, but there was another project that was on, I believe Lawson that had a third story condition. There was disagreement between the architect and the, and the owner uh, with the county of that interpretation. Um, I will say personally, I did not agree or think that should be recommended for approval. However, it did have some circumstances that this project does not have. This project seems to have a very clear definition of how much floor area is going to be three stories, which into my looking at both the plan and the elevation is quite a large, piece or plan of, of the overall project itself. Um, that said, and that leads to many other things such as increased height, blockage of views, blockage of light, and, um, and access, uh, as I said, access to sunlight. I understand that Jason may disagree with some of those items that have been raised. However, we don't have any sort of what we've asked for in the past, if there are any it, uh, items with regards to view and access, I mean, access to sunlight is that we would ask for a shadow study with that said, we don't have that. We're only basing it upon your opinion and possibly your thoughts. However, you have disagreements of opinion from the neighbors that are part of looking at the project. So at this time, I cannot, I, as, as much as I hear my council members, I could not support the project as it is right now. I, I could not even support the pro, I mean, I could, I, I couldn't even support the project even if you had support story polls and we evaluated it because my concern is really the variance. And that's really the one item that this project much as to both Larry and to Lloyd's and to Chris's point is how do you get around that with this particular, with this particular um, project itself. I, we all understand that there are growing needs of every family that comes into Kensington and we welcome you all uh, to be new neighbors and new fellows. We just have to be able to live together and be able to be a part of that. And there are times of compromise to make sure that this happens. So 
with that said, I guess the question that you need to ask you, Jason and Ayel and the, the uh, homeowners is whether or not you would like for us to, uh, I'm gonna say vote on this particular project, which would mean that it would go to the, we would vote no matter what our, our recommendations either approval or denial, it will be sent to the zoning administrator at that. That's one. Or two, uh, ask for a continuance. And it may be that you provide story polls. It also may be that you change the design of the, of the structure itself and hear upon both the council members' concerns as well as the neighbors that are, that have just, spoken. So we ask you that because we cannot, we, we will ask you if you want to go through that process. Continuance will allow you some time to think about it. It also will allow you that you will not have to pay additional fees for, for resubmittals if you plan to do it at the time. But um, that, that, just our comments. Yeah, I would obviously favor doing a follow-up versus a vote today, but kind of aligning on what is required for a follow-up. Is that something that we can finalize here or we can do a follow-up with, with you offline? I mean, story polls is, is one of them, but I heard a lot of things in terms of what can inform your decision. So what we would probably would ask you to do is that you, I mean, we weren't, we will not be, the, the council will not be the ones that will design the project for you for that's up to Jason in terms of how that is going to work out. Um, and what would happen is that whatever time you have to do that, um, then maybe at that point in time when you provide a, a, a drawing or whatever it might be that you could, you could present you, there's two things you could, just present it back to the county for a resubmittal. You can also come and just, because the planners will give you some guidance of what they hear uh, and what they see, and they will see our meeting notes of what we have, and they will give you some guidance on what they believe may work. Um, at that point in time, then um, if it is a formal submittal or whatever that submittal may be, we'll be notified. And at that point in time, we'll schedule a meeting, uh, a, you know, a, a meeting that uh, we will be able to discuss and it will be a public meeting like this. And that's why I asked all of you for your contact information in case um, there is a new meeting and you'll be informed when those when the meeting will occur and when the plans are available for you all to look at. So that's the process. There's no time frame. It could be next month. It could be in two or three months. It's just a matter to give you time to evaluate the discussion that just happened tonight and to make your best case of trying to make this work. And and and. And that's, I'll just say that. I don't know if any of the, Chris or Floyd yeah, just gonna say wants to speak up. You, you, you can, again, it sounds like you don't want to have us vote today, which is great. And it's advisable. Usually it's a great opportunity for you to listen to the voice of the community around you and, and make changes. So you, you can come back and you can present the exact same documents and, and just put the story polls up and we could come look and, and judge on view impact. The challenge I think you face is that every everyone's saying, right, is we they're, they're, you're going to have a significant challenge with the third story because it's what it's the way the proper the, the design is presented currently. So you could do that. You could come back, put the story polls up and we could we, you could take the continuance. We would come and do a site visit. So we'd ask the neighbors at 20, 22, 24, 26, you name it, to come and take a look. And we would take a personal look from their living room, their dining room. And we'd be able to make you know realistic judgments, right? Not from a camera lens, but from our eyes and say, is what's the view impact? Or you can go back and you can work with Jason and you can redesign it. So you may come back to us and say, hey, I, I heard the community, we're, we're moving it to the right, we're moving it to the left, or we're moving it down, we're moving it here, right? represent that but what it does save you a continuance saves you the opportunity of having to go back to the county and start all over again 
So that's the advantage from a fees perspective and just a timing perspective. So once you are done with either putting up the story poles and deciding on your final design, then we can come back out and take a physical look. And we would work with you and the neighbors to do that. So at this time, we just have to ask if you want us to vote for a continuance or vote for a recommendation. The first option, continuous, yeah, the follow up. Okay, good enough. So uh, at this time, so could I get, uh, so could someone make a motion? I can, I can make a motion. I would make a motion that we grant a continuance or recommend approval of a, con a continuance for 23 curve BR 21 01015. All right. And do I hear a second? I will second that one also. Okay. And I have a, so I have a motion to recommend an approval of a continuance uh, for 23 curve and a second from Moy. Do I have any other discussion? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. So I have Chris, uh, Patrick, Mary, and Lloyd. Um, so you're granted a continuance, uh, Jason. Uh, and so, um, you know, whenever you're ready in terms of that, um, feel free to tell us. Uh, you, can, you can present even what you think. To me, I can only give you what I think is, but that also you can do that as well. But it is open. It's a continuance, so it means that your application is still open. Thank you. You yeah. right. All right. Thank you all for that particular uh, discussion of the project, and we're going to move on to the next project, which is uh, one eighty nine Purdue. One eighty nine Purdue. Thank you. One eighty nine Purdue. Uh, DP twenty two oh three oh one five. The applicant requested development plan and Kensington design review to enclose deck over basement to habitable space, resulting in addition to one hundred sixty five square feet new landscape stairs from sidewalk to house and roof pitch change at the rear of the existing single family residence. The approximate gross, gross square footage is 2,310 square feet is over the gross square area threshold of 2,000 square feet. So because of the fact that it is over the threshold, we are listening to 189 Purdue. So at this time, um, can I, I guess I didn't have that shared. Uh, so at this time, will the applicant be able to speak upon this particular project? Yes, indeed. My name is Rudolph Woodman. I'm the architect for the project. And I think uh, I'll be able to give a fairly concise description of what we're doing. And I'd also like to leave plenty of time for the um, homeowner who is also here to speak. I know he has to go uh, to the airport to bring his daughter there this evening. So okay. without any further uh, chatter, let me um, share my screen. Okay, um, let me, I'm gonna scroll up to the existing and proposed floor plans. The existing is on the top and the proposed is on the bottom. This house is a, um, uh, late 40s or early 50s house and it hasn't had too much work done since then. It has two conditions which is this deck above the garage and then over here there's another small deck that's above the basement. Both of those have cre uh, created some water intrusion problems over time and um, uh, the property owner was uh, ready to solve that problem once and for all and our proposal was to just uh, enclose this deck uh, with an extension of the dining room. The other thing we're trying to solve here is there's a very steep driveway and then these uh, sort of uh, precarious stairs that go up. And you can see in the proposed plan, we're trying to make a more gracious entry from the sidewalk um, with um, code compliance stairs that, that gets you to the entry. Now I'm gonna scroll down to the um, South elevation, which I think shows uh, what we're talking about the clearest. 
I've got the south and the west here. On the top are the existing elevations and on the bottom are the proposed elevations. Right here, we're looking at that, um, that roof deck that is over the basement area. And this window right here is for the dining room. And I'm basically just proposing an addition here. I extended the roof out a little bit extra so that it covers uh, the entry stair that goes up the side of the building, which has also been a source of leaks. Uh, and to make a little, um, a nice celebratory moment of this dining room extension. Looking at it from the front, you can see that this is a hip roofed house. To try to fit a hip roof in and make it work with all the geometry, this the, the height would get pretty tall. So I decided that uh, the most minimal impact design would be a simple gable. And we're gonna do a cricket to drain the water from uh, further back. The other thing that this uh, elevation shows on the right-hand side of the proposed south elevation, you can see that this one, the room in the uh, elevation above has basically a flat roof, again, uh, causing um, some water problems over time. So we're just gonna propose another simple, this one is a hip volume, a hip roof that encloses that to try to solve those water problems. I am gonna stop my share. And uh, that's, um, that's our proposal. I'm happy to answer any questions. And I'd also like to give um, Mr. Bodell a chance to, uh, to talk to the committee. And I also thank the committee for your time. I know this is how um, our process happens and it takes a lot of time and we do appreciate uh, that you've dedicated your time to this. So thank you. All right, great. For the interest Let's just go to Mr. Bodell, uh, since you seem to need to get out of here. So, um, it's actually, I found someone else to take my daughter to the airport, so I'm, oh, I'm okay. out of that. <laughs> uh, I, this, I, I didn't expect the last thing to go as long as it did. So, simply, I've been in this house since... Um, for 25 years and um, around the time when I bought the house in 1995, I put a new roof on. Um, I have had to redeck the um, the decks numerous times, uh, the, the main deck and then the side deck. I've had to do it a number of times and I still have a leak at the stairway. So I need to do some work. In addition, I'm not getting any younger. I'm 66 and I need uh, an easier access into the house. So I figured, okay, I'll do one big project where I, you know, re-roof the house and extend it out into that little space there. And um, the, as uh, Rudy said, in the back of the building, uh, there were, there's a lot of rot. In, in the roof for various reasons and uh, it needs it needs work so I figured okay I'll do this whole thing at once and this is the genesis of this project it's it is not changing what I would call the envelope of the of the building although I don't know that architects may or may not do it but it's basically I'm not extending out I'm just in that maybe 120 square feet, 110 square feet, I'm moving out on that deck. Um, and I would, I guess I'm building up uh, and I'm, that's, that's it. I don't have anything more I really need to say, but I could answer any questions, but I think it's pretty straightforward. So I'll, I'll mute myself. All right, thank you. Um, so I'll go to the council members if there's any quick, I mean, uh, brief, I shouldn't say quick, brief questions to the applicant or the uh, homeowner at this point in time? I have none, Patrick. Okay, Larry, do you have anything? No, Lloyd? No, no, I'm, I'm good. All right, so I, uh, and I don't have any comments or questions either. So I'm gonna open it up to the public. And so if the public wants to speak, okay, Harry. <laughs> I just, uh, I've been waiting for a long time just to tell JJ that uh, I really hope that he does this uh, addition and see <laughs> for it. I think it, I think it would make a, an excellent addition to his house. That's great. Right. And Perry, you're just for the record, what your address? Uh, it's 195 Purdue. It's in the chat okay. as well. Good deal. Thank you. Oh, all right. right Thanks, Perry. 
also uh, high rating. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? We've got Leslie and a 714. Any feedback from you two? Oh, Leslie's 187. Yeah. Hi, I'm hi. Leslie. Hi, JJ, and hi, Perry. Um, it sounds um, like the project sounds very good. It's on the other side of my house. Um, I would like to talk to um, JJ and Rudolph, maybe fixing the wooden overhang on the other side, on my side of the house. But I think we could talk to otherwise. But I, I don't object to this at all. I think it sounds like a really good plan. So um, I will try to contact Mr. Widman and JJ. Um, sorry, it took so long to get to this point. I was gonna say for the hour and 46 you're on the phone for my, I think he owes you a little bit of wood, maybe a bottle of wine, but we, we'll let you guys, no, no, we'll let you guys I, solve I, that I think on it'll your be own. A real, I think it'll be a really good project. And I wanted you're a good neighbor for hanging on. Well, I, yeah, I just, I wanted to see how the process worked. I think it'll be a good project. So I'm voting yes, what if, yeah. And my husband's here too, he agrees. Good deal. Is there anyone else? Uh, if not, uh, uh, Rudy, you can uh, respond if you wish, if there's any comments that you want to respond to or G, uh, JJ, uh, either one. I'll just say, um, Leslie, we would be happy to talk to you and uh, try to accommodate what you're talking about. And thank you to everyone for showing up. It's tough to stick through the longer ones. Um, so I appreciate that you stuck around until this point. Thank you. All right, thank you. So at this point in time, I'll close the, the, the meeting and uh, just uh, talk amongst the PMAC members. So any comments, uh, I'll just, I'll start with Lloyd first. Um, well, so we're not here on a request for a variance and um, the impact on the surrounding properties would have to be minimal since there seems to be very little adjustment to the existing envelope of the home. Um, the only people who have spoken at the meeting um, are all in favor of it. So um, that's where I sit. Thank you. Larry? Uh, I completely agree with uh, everything that was just said. Good enough. Chris? Uh, a great job of talking to both your neighbors. The, the both adjacent neighbors are in support of it, so um, it seems pretty straightforward. And Patrick, if you have, unless you have a comment, I would just make a motion to recommend approval or recommend. I don't have any, recommend, I don't recommend, have any comments. I agree with all of you, and so I'll just go with Chris. So Chris, you're going to make a motion. To... I would make a motion to recommend approval of 189 for two DP two two dash zero three zero one five. Okay, I have a, a motion to approval for uh, the, the Purdue residents uh, application. Um, do I hear a second? I was waiting for you to do it a second, Lloyd. <laughs> I will second that motion. I know my place. You can do it. I know Larry. my role. <laughs> I don't want him to break his record. <laughs> I have a motion uh, uh, recommend approval. Um, um, uh, one eight nine Purdue. Two o three o one five, and a second from Lloyd. Uh, any comments or discussion? On the motion. If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, so, um, and so Chris, Patrick, Larry, and Lloyd, uh, we recommend approval. So, um, congratulations on this step. Uh, so, uh, JGA and Rudy, I will, I will inform the county planners of the. Uh, of, of the recommend a recommendation for approval. I don't recall who your planner is, but I would uh, contact them and see how quickly you can get on the zoning administrator's um, meeting agenda. So, and then, so that's it. Um, <laughs> do I hear 
a a motion to dismiss. Adjourn. Yes. Adjourn. <laughs> I'm sorry. Adjourn. I will make a motion to adjourn at. I'm not looking exactly. It looks like eight fifty. Eight fifty. Okay. And do I have a second? I'll second. <laughs> All right. All right, Larry. We got a motion to adjourn and a second from Larry. Any comments, discussion regarding the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. So great. Uh, Chris, Patrick, Larry, Lloyd approve uh, uh, adjourning. So thank you all for joining. I know it's been a long night for all of you that have been waiting for this particular project, but I thank you all for participating. Thank you for thank me you. as well. Yep. I'm thank sorry you. to interrupt. Thank you. You bet. And thank you, Patrick, right. for your leadership. All right. Well, take care, stay safe, yes. stay calm and stay positive, and we'll just make it through this whole thing again. Take care. Good night. All right. Bye -bye. Oh, good night. Good night. Good night. Nice one, guys. Thank you.